Hey Hannah Mouse One here, welcome to a series that I've wanted to start for a while now where I take your projects and show you how I would go about polishing them up into a complete game. This first episode is on the game Raspberry by Jeremiah12345 as is their scratch handle or Moxie High as they go by on YouTube. The basic concept for the game is that you have a little character who can play through different mini games. The version that existed prior to making this video was very bare bones with only the obby in anything close to a state of completion with the chill place and the zombies game both works in progress and the only other thing that the game had was the ability to change your skin. The first thing that I felt that this project needed was a thematic through line to tie together all of the visual elements. The game's name is Raspberry so I decided to lean into that as the theme, replacing the simple square player with a Raspberry for the default skin and creating a variety of fruit themed skins that you'll be able to unlock later. There's a strawberry, a pineapple, an apple and a watermelon and I think these are a bit more interesting than the simple colour swaps that we had before. I remade the menu buttons in the same style with the bold outlines and going with the raspberry pink instead of the sky blue that was there before. I opted to use handwritten lettering rather than one of Scratch's fonts because I think that Scratch's fonts are pretty ugly. They have their places, sure, and I have a couple projects where I've squeezed them in, but as a rule, no. It also didn't sit right with me with how some of the pages were navigated to with buttons on screen and others with keys on the keyboard, so I made it that all pages have their own buttons. And I condensed these down into a single sprite with clones for each button instead of having one sprite per button as there was before. But this snazzy UI was never Ever going to look right against those backdrops so I had to bring those up to par. I actually quite liked the existing style of the light background with the darker bars down the side so I just recolored those to use the pink color scheme that I've got going here and for the title page I rewrote the title and the eagle eye of you might notice that I actually misspelled the title. I do catch that before the end of this little project but it did take me an embarrassingly long time to do so. I created a play button to go onto the main title page and got that to display and then got the menu buttons I made earlier laid out as I wanted to. I gave the buttons a juicy little mouse over effect and made it so that clicking the play button takes you to the menu page. And then I moved on to the character customization page, creating a button for each of the skins I made at the top of the video. Again, condensing this down into a single sprite rather than having each one be a separate sprite as it was in the original project. Another change in my version is that unlike Moxie's version, where all the skins were available from the get go, in mine you have to buy them with coins that you'll be able to earn in the mini games. This is to give the player something to work towards. So for every skin except the basic raspberry, I had to make a second costume to display the cost. And for this, I had to design a small raspberry themed coin icon. Once these costumes were done I was able to get these to display on the skins page and I coded it so that these buttons can detect whether or not the skin was unlocked switching to the appropriate costume. To get these buttons functional I had to add money creating the UI to display it as appropriate and I made my own UI for this because I'm not letting Scratch's ugly little variable boxes anywhere near this project thank you very much. And with that done I could code in buying the costumes or equipping them if already bought. I also made a back button to take you from the skins page back to the main menu. Next I sorted out the chill place as it was called in the original version or the town as I renamed it to in mine. I made it so that it displays a grassy floor against the sky with a few bushes creating three different versions for this to allow the player to navigate to different areas of the town. I made it so that the player can appear and jump around the area and the platformer engine was definitely one of the original project's strong suits. I was able to use it with almost zero modification so great work there. I also decided to add some buildings to the town starting with three fruit themed ones in the first area. There's a peach house, a raspberry house and an avocado house with the exception of the raspberry house which presumably belongs to the player. There's a small character next to each looking like whatever their house is so a peach character lives inside the peach for instance. I got these houses to display before making houses for the other two sections of the town. One of which has veggie themed houses, a pumpkin, a cauliflower and a carrot and the other being junk food themed with a burger, french fries and ice cream. With the exception of the raspberry house you'll be able to buy these houses so I also had to make a locked version of each house with it displaying how much it costs to unlock it. Once you unlock a house it will constantly generate small amounts of money from taxes and I coded it in so that clicking a locked building unlocks it, assuming you can afford to do so. I then moved on to the mini games. There are two, Obby and Zombie. As these were the only two mini games in the original project, these are the only two I'll be adding in today. But Moxie, if you wanted to expand the game further, adding more mini games would be a great way to do so. For the Obby, I wanted near infinite content to allow the player to earn as much money as they wished without having to make an insane amount of levels. So I designed a set of super simple levels and you just have to complete as many as possible in a time limit with it selecting a random level each time you complete one. And the fact that you quite frequently get repeat levels is actually a bit of a feature, not a bug, as the practice allows you to get better at the game and earn higher scores. I added bounce paths to some levels, as this was something a lot of the levels had in the original concept, and I also added doors which are opened with buttons to add a bit more variety. And you complete the levels by reaching the flag. It's a bit of a jolt if you're thrown into the game as soon as you select Obby from the menu, so I added a 3 second countdown to the start of the game, and I added UI to say game over once the time is up. I made it so that the UI that usually displays your money displays the time remaining during the game, and your score once 
once the game is over. And I created a replay button if you want to give it another go, as well as a home button to take you back to the main menu. For Zombie, I started off by creating a basic arena for the player to jump around. I got that to display, and once I got that looking good, I created a sprite for the zombie, which I tried to make look like a mouldy version of the raspberry. And then I made some basic AI for the zombie or zomberry? I don't know. But either way, it moves towards the player, and if the player is above the zombie, it jumps to try and reach them. It's really simple, and the zombies aren't smart enough to like pathfind around the platforms or anything, but it will serve. I also gave the player the ability to shoot. In the original, this was done with the space key, so I kept that, but I also made it so that you can click to shoot, because that just feels better to me. And I made it so that the zombies spawn in, and so that the player can kill them, and so that they can kill the player. The objective of this mini game is to kill as many zombies as you can within the time limit without the zombies killing you first. I then went through and added in some sound effects to things like the menu buttons, the player's jump, the mini game countdown, using pitch shifting on any sounds which are played a lot of times in the row, like the jump, to stop them from becoming brain meltingly annoying, and you can't talk about sounds without talking about music. I threw together a quick track in Soundtrap, but I'll admit I didn't put in quite as much effort as I could have done, mostly because Moxie told me that they already had someone who'd help them with that, and given my musical skill level, I'm sure they can do a better job. But I think I got something that's good enough, so I threw that into Scratch and got that to play on a loop. From there, it was just a few polished details. For instance, I created a description for each of the menu options when the button is moused over to give the player an idea of what they can do from that page, which could be useful if they aren't familiar with what an obby is. I swear I've never heard that term outside of like Roblox. Or if something like zombie isn't enough to give them a clear idea of what a game entails, or even that it's a game at all. And I also made some instructions for each mini game to appear during the countdown and created a thumbnail for the game keeping it quite simple but I still think that it's really effective and punchy and with that I was ready to release the project. I think that it's quite the transformation but that the spirit of the original is still in there. This was super fun and I'm really happy with how this came out. And if you have a project that you'd like to see me revamp, there's a link in the description to a Google form that you can fill out to submit your project for this series. And apart from that, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like and subscribe if you did. It lets me know there's something to see more of. Join the Discord, link down below, and I'll see you next week with another video. Bye!